Yo, what it do guys, and welcome back to another Warframe video. Uh, in today's video, we're actually going to go and do a bit of a feedback, review, thoughts, um, a little bit of a look into a build, stuff like that, all surrounding the 52nd Warframe uh, Citrine, which just came out earlier today, Citrine's Last Wish update, and uh, overall pleasantly surprised, but we'll go ahead and dive straight into that, uh, starting off with the abilities and kind of just reviewing them, uh, what my thoughts were and so forth. So let's just dive straight into it, all right? But I hope you guys are doing well, and also let me know how you guys uh, found Citrine. Did you, uh, did you enjoy her? If you don't have your hands on her and you've seen any kind of gameplay, how are you finding what you're what you're seeing is it something that you like is it something that you dislike i could assure you from what i was reading and how i played her felt very very different so the whole theory crafting into the practical just didn't quite meet my expectations and i was honestly surprised in some areas other areas not as surprised about so let's just go and start off with i'm going to move my camera up here with the passive okay so passive is citrine grants nearby allies five health regeneration per second now, whenever you go and pick up a health orb, it will basically go ahead and continue to scale up into a maximum of 25. I believe this passive also scales on strength. Not so much that it increases further than 25, it's always a maximum of 25. But I believe if you go ahead and actually have strength within your build, the amount that you get back per health orb actually does increase on that one. So health in, in Warframe, at least in the current state, health's always going to be good. Health is your last layer of defense. You got no health, you're dead, right? But unfortunately, because shield gating is just still so superior right now, um, shield gating with your parrot crowd control and all rolling guards and the vulnerability and whatever else you want to go and throw in there, um, you don't see an awful lot of health regeneration kind of coming back. It's still good, uh, but I definitely don't rate it as like one of the better passes in the game, but I definitely don't rate it as one of the worst passes in the game. So it's kind of a, in, in the middle of the pack right now, but I do like it. At the end of the day, free health is free health, right? Not too bad, especially if something goes ahead and hits you with a toxin proc. You've got a little bit of a way to kind of regen yourself slowly. So anyways, moving on from the passive, we look at the first ability. Now this one, <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised with. Uh, so we slash and stagger enemies and it inflicts a bleed. So ideally, what I've kind of found out about this one is whenever you go and press your first ability um, and you will use this quite a fair bit, there's almost very little downside to not utilizing this, in my opinion. So long as you go ahead and hit the enemy, which scales off range, um, you'll basically go and put like this little icon above their heads. When that icon is on them and you go and kill them, they have a chance to go and drop a health and an energy orb. Now, for any of your experienced players out there it screams equilibrium equilibrium prime flow was like literally the first thing that i thought of as soon as i read that i was like hmm let's go and have a look at little look at that mod inside the build and they were the first two things i fit in that i promise you when i say this this ability genuinely made me or allowed me to breathe with with the rest of my kit and i didn't really find myself ever struggling in a solo format i did solo mot survival um in the void steel path what are they level 140 enemies wasn't that much of an issue again didn't ever find myself going under the radar for energy and being like oh my goodness i've got to kind of juggle this juggle that no you could just keep proccing this and so forth this also encourages things like brief respite mod but again we'll kind of get into that a bit later but my point is even in solo or in a group i found my energy just being top tier like it's absolutely top tier so really good uh, ability especially paired with equilibrium really good amount of energy return maybe a little too good but again most of this uh, throughout this video is going to be like first thoughts obviously she just came out earlier today as to how she evolves down the line i'm not too sure i'm very curious to go and see what other people will go and uh generate with her and what they can think of and what else they can share but for now uh, i'm just looking at her core kit so fractured blast really good thumbs up i personally really like the ability uh, not only do you get guaranteed innate slash but you also go and get a guaranteed stagger as well so you can use it as just a kind of like a back off and then uh, kill him energy and health good overall good moving on to the second one preserving shell preserving shell now <laughs> my opinion on i don't know what that laugh was my opinion on this one has changed a little bit from theory crafting reading it to, to genuinely play in it. it it changed very very quickly so preserving shell to give you an idea is you've got the oh sorry when you go and see where it says drain zero on this that's currently a bug just ignore that she does cost energy for anybody who might be looking at this going why does it say zero if it does get patched later that's great but it does cost energy i don't know why it says zero just ignore that <clears throat> 
So duration is just duration, the uptime, how long you keep it up. But for the most part, there's damage reduction. This is when you initially cast the ability. So you basically go and pop it on. Now imagine something like Gara's, I believe it's Splinter Storm. You know, when you get like damage reduction on it or Baruch's, um, what is Baruch's, where well, he has the, the things going around him. I've forgotten the name. Maybe I'll go and pop it in the video. I, I can't believe I forgot the name of it. But anyways, any ability that has that damage reduction, when you initially cast it, that damage reduction remains usually flat across the board, right? Baruch obviously tends to lose a little bit as it seeks off and hits other enemies. Well, this one's kind of the same like that, except from it's rewarding you for uptime. It's rewarding you for being either aggressive or defensive and getting kills against enemies. So kills and even assists. So as long as you basically go ahead and toggle this, you're in a good spot. Now, inside solo, I didn't really like this as much. I found it a bit hard on its own. Now, when I paired this with adaptation, it was looking a bit saucy. I'm not going to lie. Adaptation really enhanced this even further. Go figure as it would. Anything with um, innate damage reduction in the ability paired with the mod of adaptation just gives you a good amount of survivability. So I really did go ahead and enjoy that when it was paired in there. Definitely could recommend by all means if you find yourself uh, struggling for a bit more survival, chuck it on in. Uh, you can get more damage reduction per kill. Now keep in mind and more damage reduction per assist. It caps at 90%. It can't go any higher than 90%. Again, that's why you pair adaptation with it. And I think that takes it to like 99% or something like that. And if you leave it up where that duration is, and let's say the duration slowly timing out, you got like five, four, three, and you're not killing anything, you're not getting any assists, it will always be 25% duration lowest. Okay, lowest 25%, highest, um, highest is 90%. So as you could kind of see there as well. Um, the damage reduction would start at 40%. So you don't need a tremendous amount of strength. I don't really feel like you need an awful lot of strength in her, to, to be honest. I mean, you can if you want to. I just personally didn't find that much usage for it, mostly in these two abilities, but I'll kind of explain why in a moment. Um, so yeah, I, I think it I think it is a good ability. I didn't think it was a good ability earlier. I was thinking, if I'm just using this, why would I not just use Gara or Baruch or someone else like that? But actually, the idea of this is once you kind of cast it, um, enemies that, or allies that are with, essentially within range, it doesn't really say anything about range on this, but there is range included. Um, I, it might be affinity range. It might be affinity range. It might be within the 50 meters. But once you go and cast it, you know how like on Gara, you've got to look at someone and put Splinter Soul on them? Well, you ain't got to do that. You can literally just press the button and everybody gets it. So if you do go ahead and scale your strength and you scale it all the way up to 90% cap, it doesn't mean that, well, the kills and assists, whatever, we'll talk about that in a minute. But once you get 90%, so whenever you go and press it, you're basically always going to keep that. Now, how does this also work? This also has like a refresh that you can go and do. So if you let it time out and you recast it, I believe it would start from whatever your strength is applied to it. So for me, it'd be 62 every time I was to let it time out and recast it. However, and from what I was seeing is if you can keep it at 90% and then from 90% to 80%, it drops quite quick. Believe me, it, especially in solo, you'll see just how quick it drops. But in a group format, you don't notice it as much because allies are also, there's kills, there's a sit, whatever, you get the idea. There's just so much else going on. So it does, it just does a lot of this. Basically, you're like 90, 80, 90, 80, 90, 80. It's always up and down. Um, but if you recast it before it times out, I believe you still keep the same number that it was before it was just about to go and time out. So if it was 88% and I pressed my re the same button again for Preserver Shell, it would still be 88% again when I cast it. So it's actually pretty good. So if you're looking for a way to refresh it whenever you want to refresh it, always, I think it rewards you for basically keeping it juggled. Does that make sense? Anyways, that's that's what I was something that I was noticing inside a group format, and I was thinking, oh, that's actually pretty good. Um, again, I didn't like this when I first read it, but the more that I actually played it, in terms of quality of life, I didn't have to look at my allies. I could just basically press it whenever they were within affinity range, give or take, and uh, they were pretty much protected. So from there onwards, we would just kill, assist, whatever, just keep juggling, and you're pretty much golden. So actually, I kind of like it. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like it. It definitely helped. We were playing with a limbo, and it helped the limbo inside the group, which was nice as well. We go over to Prismatic Gem. This is where the issues come in, is this ability. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of solutions for this, but I don't know if either of uh, any of these are going to be addressed. But Prismatic Gem, the idea about this is you basically go ahead and, and deploy like this, this crystal gem that just basically sits there. <clears throat> And now it won't really do anything until you hit an enemy. When you then hit that enemy, it will then apply 
all four of the different status effects. Now, these can essentially actually be scaled as well, so you can get more and more stacks on them. I think cold was capping out around eight. I don't know if I can... It's all going to be your fire rate on top of it as well and your status chance. So the, the higher status chance that you have, the better it was, so forth, whatever. Still a bit of an issue here. But anyways, my point is, when it came to it, I... Uh, I didn't like that it wasn't really doing anything until I targeted someone. And if I targeted plenty of people, I, hopefully I'll have gameplay on the screen here. Um, I threw a sinister out and I was thinking, oh, okay, well, if we just hit. So the suffix is, oh, sorry, the prefix is throw the crystal out. The suffix is let your weapon hit multiple enemies, right? So you would expect the gem to hit multiple enemies. Uh -uh. That's that's not the case. I can't tell if this is a bug or not, but I found it being quite lackluster. It seems to be targeting... If it is targeting two, I'm not seeing it very well, but it seems like to be targeting essentially one. Uh, the gem targets enemies. Yeah, and it says enemies. It does say it targets enemies that are taking weapon damage from Citrine and their allies. Maybe it's bugged at the minute. It just didn't really feel that good. It felt incredibly underwhelming and I wasn't enjoying it. Now that I'm actually rereading this, it actually does sound like it's supposed to hit everybody. But as of right now, it is currently not. I can tell you that. My goodness. Again, hopefully I've put the video up there so you can see it. Um, on top of that, you get locked when you go ahead and push it out, which means, yes, if you've got natural talent as a mod to throw into your builds, or if you've got the uh, amber shards that you can get from the Archons, Archon Hunts and, and uh, the Cold Missions, those would also be good to go and throw in there. So you're not locked into this kind of like Kamehameha where you're pushing out a prismatic gem. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. Some of the things that I basically had in here is so long as I still got my list here. So this is my like little notes. Um, I was wondering if, because it's, it's, it's so it's ideally, I think it's zone control, right? And I think that's what you're trying to approach it as. So you put it in somewhere, it's like a choke point in zone control. But like I said, because it's not hitting multiple enemies, I don't know, again, it seems like it's bugged, but other suggestions, potentially making it orbit a player. The reason why I say that is because because it's so defensive and restricted to where you're putting it up, if you set up like here and so forth, especially in solo atmosphere and, and whatever you're doing, let's say like solo survival. Um, if you was to go on the offense, her kit doesn't have the biggest offense, in my opinion. So she is very, in terms of like actual gameplay, her solo doesn't feel that great. Her, her, her group play felt really good but her solo didn't feel very good. And anytime I was going on the offense, I was like, oh my goodness, if I need to reset this back up and I was casting it like into a group and I didn't take the group out or something, I found myself getting punished so much, getting lasered down. And I was thinking, this isn't good. Um, getting this set up, uh, I'd have to be like hiding behind something and then popping it out and here and there. So it is quite a defensive thing. If it orbited the player, it could be a little bit nicer because then that way I can kind of bring it with me. Maybe you'd lessen the range if you had it orbiting the player. I don't know. Maybe that's not the goal what they're going for here because if you play the, the new mirror defense mode, um, you can see on the two crystals, they both basically have one of these when you go ahead and um, stack up the, uh, what are they called? <sighs> Citrine something. You know what I mean, right? If you play the new defense mode, if you haven't, don't worry about it. But they can basically go ahead and get one of these prismatic gems on them as well. Um, so I guess that's the idea is that you're supposed to use it as a choke point. It just doesn't feel that great. Again, if it is bugged, it's bugged. If it's not, it, it needs it needs a change. Proctor status or DPS effects. So the heat, toxin, stuff like that output without us needing to do weapon damage. I felt like could be interesting. So instead of having like a prefix and a suffix, the prefix I put the gem out, the suffix I hit the enemy. Instead, just have like the prefix suffixes put the gem out. And now it just does what it does. Do you know what I mean? I think that could be kind of good because then, but I, I'm sure that they probably don't want to like overtune it and have people kind of AFK in methods where you kind of throw it out and it just does all the work for you. Uh, we have had metas like that with particular Warframe abilities before, and maybe they're just looking at something different. Don't get me wrong, there's still Warframes in the game that can still do this, but you get the idea. You might understand that they're trying to approach it a different way. I'm not too sure, but that's how it felt. I was thinking of another one, which is draining enemy shields and convert that drain uh, to giving us regeneration. I was thinking that could be interesting, but then it's not really thematic to her whole health regen kind of thing. She's got a passive for health regen. She's got fractured blast to go and regenerate health orbs. It, it, it just, it, if it was to go ahead and leak shields, it wouldn't really be thematic. And I don't know where we'd be going with that. So either way, I personally, if it is bugged, fair enough, disregard everything I said. If it isn't bugged, then um, ugh. this would be the ability I would subsume. That's how I'm going to go and put it. And I wouldn't think twice. 
I use this solo and I use this in a group format and neither formats did I think, wow, I feel its presence. No, I didn't. Um, if anything, it would be good as like a primer, if you guys understand what a primer is. If you don't know what a primer is, the idea is that we use it as a way to generate status effects on, on something. And then we take mods that scale uh, per status effect on the enemy. So like condition overlies, galvanized aptitude to get the idea. And then we would do more damage. So you could use it as like a primer where you're getting four free elements on them. But even then, that would be quite lackluster. So I don't really know how I feel about it, um, especially with the new cold changes as well. Cold actually got buffed. Anybody doesn't know uh, the base of cold now slows like 50% where it used to be like 25%. And then the scales all the way up to, is it 85%? I can't remember. Forgive me. Oh, 80% is around there. So it slows got, um, cold's got buffed quite significantly with the status effect. It's really good. But um, yeah, I don't know about this ability. I, I, won't, I won't lean on it any longer. Then we look at Crystallize. Now, Crystallize is absolutely fantastic. At least that's how I'm feeling about it right now. I'm also a little bit on edge about it, and I'll kind of explain why. But uh, Citrine summons Crystal Fractals, and the Fractals rush forward seeking enemies. Now, the idea is what will happen is when you go ahead and cast it on the ground, it will go ahead and, and find like an enemy. When it hits an enemy, it'll basically freeze the enemy. Now, First things first, you've got crowd control. That's fantastic. We want crowd control because we want to go ahead and be able to manipulate the battlefields. They can't do damage to us. We can do damage to them. What's even better than not the fact that we can just do damage to them, but this also has a 300% critical chance on it. Now, what I have tested, it definitely works on primaries and secondaries, and it also works on melees. Mind you, you do not need it on things like Redeemer. I'm just going to, it looks fancy with the red numbers, but oh my goodness, Redeemer is a beast and it can one shot majority of things in the first place. But I don't know if it works on Warframe abilities. You know how like Jaya was the first one to introduce kind of crit chance within the kit? Someone let me know inside the comments. I haven't tested it. Again, first impressions, I didn't really get a chance, but for the most part, I should have tested it. I just ran out of time today, but you get the idea. I think it is a great ability to be able to crowd control them and basically debuff them to buff us to go and do more damage to them. I was using these on the Acolytes. Hopefully I've got some gameplay and you would have seen the gameplay and you would just shred the Acolyte. It can't move. You would hit, you would just keep shooting a crystal continuously and they would just go down rapidly. It felt great to use. Now, something that to go, to go ahead and mention about the crystallizability is it is absolute critical chance, not relative. So the difference between that is it's additive crit chance, not multiplicative. Additive crit chance is if you have 5% crit chance base on the weapon, 5%, and you had 300% crit chance added onto it, it'd be 305, right? Right, if you have 5% uh, base and you have 300% multiplicate if you would end up with 15. So there's a difference between 15% and 305%. Uh, it basically rewards any weapon out there that isn't critical related in the first place. And you can actually go and get some nice kind of critical uh, combinations going with like status heavy weapons and so forth. So personally, I do really like it. Um, I'd argue two things. Uh, maybe there might be a third thing here, but I'd argue the first thing is it is a little bit slow when you go ahead and cast it, it takes a little bit of time for it to go ahead and seek. There's no trajectory speed in there. Uh, wouldn't mind if it was a little bit more instant or just a little bit quicker than what it currently is. Um, there are definitely times where I'd, I'd dive into a group of people and let's say that they were like, so I could do 23 meters on that. Let's say that they were like 15 meters away and I'm with a group and I go and press it. Yeah, sure. The first f like five meters, seven meters, they're all, they're all sharded. But as soon as you get to the last, we'd probably kill them by that point. Uh, that might just be a scaling, uh, a power creep kind of thing, a whole different issue. But for the most part, it felt like, hmm, wouldn't mind if this speeded up just a little bit. Just my two cents by all means. Excuse me, just had to cough that. I'm not going to cut that out. We're just going to keep going. <laughs> Free ball in this right now. That was weird. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, something else that you can find was obviously uh, like the prismatic gem. Okay, it's good because when you do cast it, you can kind of move with it. It's like a slam kind of down into the ground. So at least you're still moving. Anything that basically keeps you stationary and locked in this game can be a bit problematic in terms of survival. So, but I did also think a natural talent and an amber shard on it would be a little bit better as well. Um, besides from that, I don't know if I had any other things going to say about it. I probably did and I've forgotten it right now, but overall, I personally did really like it. I thought it did a good job. It locked up enemies and it basically allowed me to go and do extra damage to them. Now, when it came to the overall kit, what did I personally find myself cycling as a rotation honestly 
one and two, one and two, one and two. This was literally the cycle that I would find. There's no downside or, or you know, no benefit to not using fractured blast just keep ticking it keep going baby you're just getting free health free energy ops for, uh, ops ops for you and your team and i thought it was really good so i like this ability when it came towards this one again if you could just juggle it at times you don't have to spam it as often but something that i did go and find is because i had these two on i was also using brief respite mod which i'll show you in my build in a second mostly because i was using it in solo and i was looking for better survivability although nowadays you probably won't need it um i was i was always able to go and give myself shields and over shields back to help my survivability right so i thought that was pretty good so biggest problem in here in my opinion is the prismatic gem i can't tell if bugged i can't tell if not bugged they did just put a hotfix through. I should check the notes of that, shouldn't I? If they, if they put the hotfix through and they said, oh, by the way, it was a bug. Oh my goodness. Hopefully someone's watched to this part of the video and they've gone, yeah, okay, well, I haven't jumped the gun there yet. Don't worry, Clark. You're you're all right, bud. It's it's still not working as intended or it doesn't feel so. So hopefully uh, it doesn't. But anyways, if it is a bug, hopefully they fix it. If it's not a bug, hopefully it gets patched. Um, now, in terms of uh, kits and stuff like that, I'm going to go over towards upgrade. This is currently what I was running and this is what I was looking into. Um, overall, the main thing, uh, just talking about her abilities real quick. The main things that I saw in here that I did like was she does scale pretty well with duration and she does scale a little bit here with strength. Personally, I didn't really feel like the prismatic gem was worth putting um, strength on because I felt like the damage was a little bit lackluster in my opinion. And the damage on this, I could be wrong when I say this, but I think it's actually only on impact. So the damage doesn't really matter on this one. You can't scale the critical chance. So basically it felt like strength wasn't that much of a necessity. So I actually ended up going transient forgery because I could hit my duration and I didn't mind hitting it. So I kind of just whacked that in there being like, it's 25% duration, 27.5% duration that I lose. It's not the end of the world. Um, but I did want some strength because I wanted to try and help preserve and shell. Ideally, if you just want to get preserve and shell straight away to 90%, go for it. At, at the end of the day, it's going to scale down anyways. It's going to downsize over time. So if you're not getting kills, if you're not getting assists, you are losing uh, damage reduction. So again, it rewards you for that high output. As for... Um, as for the rest of the build, you can see what I was talking about earlier. The Prime Throw, the Equilibrium, these worked an absolute treat. I found myself with no energy issues. I'd almost somewhat argue you probably don't need Prime Flow, but it does take you to 180, and that can be a little bit scary at 180. Unfortunately, I can't quite see the drains here, but it's safe to assume that that was 100. Um, so it might be a little bit scary to go ahead and do that. Um, I didn't really want to look into that too much, so I just figured sod it we'll just kind of go with these two and see how it goes thumbs up from me these two work wonders you won't have energy issues uh from here onwards this is where i got a little bit interested now i did argue about natural talent as well these two abilities again if you're going to subsume something we can go over that in a moment but for the most part the natural talent um mod as a whole genuinely helped whenever i'd use these so it's up to you if you want to go and throw this in here if you've got amber archon shards um, that you can go and use on Warframes. Uh, for example, like I have them on my Nova right here. See these Amber Archon Shards? 25% uh, casting speed a pop. Uh, these are just very good utility. I'm not even going to lie to you. Um, so if you can go ahead and get those on, you definitely want to go and do so. It would save you a mod slot as well. So you can you can ignore this and use this as a flex mod right now, okay? So take it out of the builds. If I just do that, you get the idea. As for the rest of it, I didn't want to. I didn't want to hurt strength too much. I've personally felt like the narrow-minded was just the right call because I was like, I don't really need a tremendous amount of range. Personally, I'm kind of in their face due to the damage reduction of preserving shell. So the meters on this and the meters on that generally felt okay. I don't know. Maybe I've looked at that wrong, but it didn't really feel like I needed a tremendous amount of range. Again, you can always copy the build and try it. You'll see what I mean. In the solo format, you have to work a little bit harder, but in the group format, it just felt really good. Um, so yeah, I didn't really feel like I needed a tremendous amount, of, like, tremendous amount of range, but it's up to you. The range would also probably help the prismatic gem, but again, that's entirely up to you. It doesn't feel like it's hitting mobile targets right now. Narrow minded was probably the obvious call. If we're going to use one corrupted mod here, it was probably going to be narrow minded. I say that, and I got transient in here, so there's two. From now onwards. I felt like adaptation was the right call when pairing with preserving shell. There's a lot of damage reduction coming in there. You can go for it. Now, rolling guards, I don't think is a necessity in this build either. So although you are seeing the build, I am picking it apart as well. 
didn't feel like a necessity. It felt more like a luxury. Didn't really feel like it was overly needed as much. You could easily go and take the rolling guard out and maybe go for some like flat health or something. Something that you could go and do if you are going to keep the prismatic gem is you can actually go and run the Archon mods. Now, I will go and talk about these ever so quickly. I'll just quickly go and touch on them. The Archon mods do work on her. Well... The Archon Intensify doesn't work on her. Uh, I was hoping this would work because of the fact that she's restoring health, but through health orbs. And I was like, oh, can it? It doesn't, unfortunately. So we can kind of roll that one off. And unfortunately, we have to roll off the Archon Flow. The reason for that is because enemies killed by cold abilities, abilities have a 10% chance to go and drop a energy orb. Well, that's a 10% chance to drop an energy orb when this alone scales in strength and it's a higher percentage. It just didn't really feel like it was worth the extra drain when this is already a 14 and this is a 16. I was like, mm, I'm a little bit tight. Five former on her already, even with an aura former in there. I was like, mm, that doesn't feel it. But continuity stretch and vitality you all seem to actually have benefits if you are going to be using prismatic gem vitality can give you health which goes well with your overall damage reduction and so forth um as a last layer of defense if you need to go ahead and utilize it um health will also go ahead sorry the heat damage will go ahead and be applied twice uh, if the prismatic gem can go and apply heat which is also really good the continuity as well um you can go ahead and apply toxin on it uh, you also you get the dur you get the duration which is good and you can also apply corrosive towards it because you're going to do toxin on that so you basically get corrosive with it it's not too bad really is it so you can go to run that if you want to and even the arcane uh, archon stretch forgive me if you're running the archon stretch as well you can also go ahead and basically benefit from just keeping this out um and just utilizing from it so i was like hmm but again these are all high in drain so it just didn't really feel like something that i wanted to continue with but you kind of get the idea i can take that back out but hopefully you guys are with me so far so i like the prime throw i like the equilibrium i like the adaptation those were in there i do like the transient fortitude i do like the narrow minded stretch is entirely up to you if you want to add more range in here you could probably go and do so things like uh, you can just type range in general if you are looking for more uh, auger reach you can go throw in there auger reach would also help the energy spent on abilities is converted into shields which would pair with brief, uh, brief respite as well so you get 150 on that plus 40 190 percent whenever you're casting your abilities for survivability if you're looking for it again not overly needed but just an extra layer of defense um brief respite for me worked better in solo in group format i didn't really need it i also had a wisp in my group in group format so i will be honest i can say wisp and everyone's gone that makes sense right yeah fair enough i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna be truthful to it um although this is first impressions of the warframe and the build the the kit the mods um I gotta go and be honest about it so uh, definitely worked better inside a solo format um it just helped me helped me massively stay alive um so it's up to you how you want to go and do this if you are running solo it's up to you prime sure footage if you don't have this mod don't even worry about it i believe that all of this stuff changes in the future anyways when we go and get self damage coming through but prime shore footage is really good because i go and pair it with spore laser which is one of my favorite guns in the game um so prime shore footage just basically means that i don't get knocked back whenever i go and use it could always go and run Unary Focus School. You do what suits you. You do what you want. All right. Anyways, so that's probably like more of my set ones in stone. From here onwards, I can kind of flex. Like I said, if you want to go for more strength, it's entirely up to you. It rewards uh, Perseverance Shell. If you want to go, oh, and it will also reward the overall scaling on Fractured Blast uh, for the health and energy drop so you can get more of a guaranteed. Um, if you want to go go for a bit of health in here and throw some Archon mods in there, you can go and do so. I don't really feel like there's too much outside of that, but it really just now starts to boil down. Okay, Clark. Well, let, maybe I'll, before I say okay, Clark, before we go into the uh, subsumption, uh, Arcanes. Um, I personally felt like Mo Augmented basically made the most amount of sense. Mo Augmented paired with the idea that you having to kill anyways with a preserving shell. One and one just basically made sense. So from there on, it's recasting it was actually really good. That might have actually been... Now that I think about it, can you remember earlier when I was saying that you can go ahead and keep the percentage higher? <laughs> this might have been it. Oh, you can do the, you can go back and double check that. I might actually be wrong on that one. This might have actually answered it. Uh, if you guys are still with me in the video, thank you guys. I appreciate it. And I hope you're enjoying it so far. And also a friendly reminder, if you do like this and you like the kind of insight and whatnot, hit the like button. 
Um, I don't know if this video is going to do well, but I'm going to give it a shot. And thank you guys for, for watching anyways. Um, but I, I paired that with that because it kind of made sense, right? Um, why not? Strength is still good to go ahead and throw in here. So it is going to go and help you. And then Arcane Velocity as well. Again, I was using Spore Laser. Um, there is a few other things that I feel like you could go and use, but they're all kind of like survivability related stuff. Um, so not really overly needed as much. You can run Aegis, you can run Grace Guardians. Because again, you've got damage. If you've got damage reduction inside your kit, any kind of like armors, shields, what any kind of generation, you get the idea? They're just naturally really good. Otherwise, at this point, I just felt like, yo, know, she's already got some damage output due to crystallize. So I'm going to shoot the shards. I want it to go and get more kind of utility from that. And that's where I chimed that in. So anyways, that was roughly what my build was. Uh, I'm still probably going to end up sticking with it, testing it around. This is a first impression kind of build. And where it goes from there, I have no idea. Maybe it gets better. Maybe it gets worse. <laughs> Who knows, right? Who knows? But share me your builds and what you guys found work with you. Now, as for what would I go and throw in here? I had a little think about it. Personally, she doesn't... I don't really feel like she needs the mobility or anything else like that. So I wouldn't go for any mobility related stuff. I also felt like she didn't really need an awful lot of defense related structure. Um, it felt like it paired really well with the preserving, with the crowd control and crystallize. When you're, when you're using this in solo, I didn't really feel like she needed any kind of survivability. What if... Oh, that's a unranked natural talent uh what it felt like that she needed was or well, not so much needed but i felt like an offense would be good now it comes to mind things like mirage's eclipse zatu's Z zatu's oh no zaku's zada whisper oh my god tongue twister and rhino's raw stuff like that just going to bump out your gun damage which didn't actually it's not in terms of synergy it makes sense right because if you've got to go and hit shards and bump up your damage even further the critical is going to go and scale off the base so it kind of adds up um you could go and do something like that again works really well on those single related targets acolytes so forth you could just knock them down but let me know what you think let me know what you think uh i don't really know what else going throw in there i personally i just saw the time of the video sorry guys uh i personally feel like that this uh this is probably the thing that i'd subsume and i'd probably go an offensive trait on it so probably something to do with weaponry and paired weaponry with the shards from this and just go for a big nuke kind of thing if not some kind of aoe would also be good as well aoe offensive nothing comes to the top of my head right now forgive me um, but we'll go and get into uh the next portion of things as i open up my notes how unprofessional of me uh no just, we're just on the final thoughts forgive me we're just on the final thoughts overall how have i found citrine i like her I like her. I wouldn't say she's top of the pack of Warframes. I wouldn't say she's bottom of the pack of Warframes. This is a video that gives you my first impressions, my thoughts. How does this look a month from now? How does this look from a year from now? Who knows? When she gets augments, could open her up even further. But she definitely doesn't feel like, and I'm just going to say as is, she definitely doesn't feel like a Yureli, so don't panic. All right? Yureli is a hot mess. Uh, I'm just going to be honest. Um, and then there's other frames that just kind of need reworks. You know, your inner Rosses, your hydroids, whatever. She's not in that category. She is pretty fun to play. She's rewarded for being in a group format. So take her in a group format. And um, she's all right. I would just say Prismatic Gem is probably my biggest issue with her right now. Again, I'm going to go back to the whole bug versus intended thing. I've got no idea. So ultimately, I know I've asked you guys, and maybe I've rambled a little bit too much here, but how did you guys find it? How have you guys found her? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? I'll definitely go and keep my eyes in the comment section and see um, if anybody else can you know, either sway my opinion and be like, oh, by the way, did you try this or did you try that? Or, you know, it's always nice to just go and get some feedback. And also just if DE watches this as well, thanks for watching anyways. Um, but just a little bit of feedback. I think she's good. She kind of reminds me a little bit of like, you know, when Styanax came out, wasn't really top of the pack, definitely wasn't bottom of the pack. Styanax was actually a pretty good, fun, engaging frame to go and play with. So I really enjoy, enjoyed it. I feel like Varuna's also been good as well. And now Citrine's also pretty good as well. So another another utility related support kind of frame that fits in there. Um, if you guys are looking for something a little bit different. But anyways, chat, that is going to be... I called you guys chat because I'm too used to streaming. Anyways, chat, that is going to be it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys for hanging out. As always, hit the like button if you guys liked it. Hey, if you don't like it, dislike it. It's all cool. I just know what I should be doing from here onwards. All right? But thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys again in the next video. <laughs>